All right, guys, welcome back to the shop. So today we're gonna be working on getting these side rails fully cleaned up, getting the edge profile on them, and just overall getting them ready for finish. So you guys might remember earlier on in the series, I said I didn't want to glue up the headboard and footboard till I had these finished up. That way I could check the fit of the legs against this area here, make sure it was either flush or in the, now that we've added that round over in, it would be just in under that round over. Now I forgot about that yesterday when I got all excited to glue up the headboard and footboard. Now we have to somehow know how much material to remove for both ends of these boards, only on the front face, luckily, uh, to make sure that they fit up nicely. So I know that none of my side rail pieces were sitting proud of the legs that were they were mounted into, which means that all I have to do is just remove one eighth of an inch from this edge here, and we should be just fine. So we're gonna be doing the same thing on the side rails here as we did on those long stretchers for the headboard and footboard, or we're just gonna be tapering in the end, because that's gonna be a lot easier than trying to remove an eighth of an inch of material from this whole massive board. And so I'm primarily gonna be using the hand plane on these side rails here, because we still have a lot of tear out from just where the areas where the router just crossed the grain weirdly and tore it out. So there is gonna be a decent amount of material to remove here. Now again, if you don't have a hand plane, the sanding works just fine too. I've flattened plenty of boards before and then sanded them nice and flat. The only trick there is that you want to try and get a hard pad for your sander like I have for my Bosch that doesn't cup and warp and all that so that it will actually create a fairly flat surface. But again here I really don't care how this surface comes out. It could be completely rounded for all I care because by the time we add the roundovers to the top and the bottom you really won't be able to tell what the shape of this thing is. Plus it's a side rail of a bed. It's not like it's something that has reference or anything like that to it. So as long as it looks good that's all that's really going to matter here. So that was fun. I uh, I decided I wanted to double check the side rails before I go through all the effort just to make sure that nothing goes wrong. So I got everything set up. I had everything standing nicely. The footboard wasn't rocking around. I made sure it was nice and stable. But then I bumped the footboard with the side rail and the, the footboard fell and knocked over the camera. The camera fell onto the ground, lens first. That's always the best things for a camera. Uh, luckily it seems fine. The outer housing of the uh, inner area of the lens is, the, just the plastic part is cracked. So I am, uh, I'm kind of worried about the, the lens and how it's, things are going to look. But so far, from what I can tell, the autofocus is fine. It zooms in, it zooms out. All this stuff, it seems like it's working just fine. So uh, I've dropped this camera before. Uh, but yeah, never, never onto concrete that hard. And uh, yeah, that's uh, not something I particularly like to do with my camera gear. So now I know in the future, never leave a big heavy chunk of wood like this footboard that is now a solid object. Uh, freestanding because it, it will not choose to stay freestanding uh, for the most part. It is an item that is very challenging to balance and as soon as you interrupt that perfect balance that it has, it will fall over. So that is good to know. I will not put camera gear anywhere near the footboard where it can fall into. <laughs>
Okay, so we got one side done, tapered down, and we got a finished plane that will then finish off with some sanding because the hand plane is leaving a little bit of tear out, and I don't want to have to transition out to a different blade. Right now, I'm using a 40 degree blade, so overall the finish quality is pretty good, but we do have some, some small areas of tear orders going completely against the grain. And so I'm really glad my brain eventually kicked in when I was working on this side here, uh, because what I was started by doing is I was just hand planing up the board the same way we did on the long stretchers to remove the material. Now, in the case of those long stretchers, it worked because we didn't have that much material to take off. Uh, taking off that eighth of an inch over that four inch space there is not a whole ton of material. Whereas here, this is 12 inches and we're trying to take off three sixteenths over a 20 inch length here. That's a lot of material to take off. So the rule of thumb is anytime you're using a hand plane, you want to remove a decent amount of material fairly quickly is you never go with the grain. With, going with the grain is how you get the nicest, best quality cut. But when you're just removing a bunch of material, having a nice cut doesn't really matter. So what you can do is either go completely perpendicular with the grain. So you're just going across it like that. And that's how you remove the most material, but it is going to leave a very rough torn out surface. You can also go to a bit of a diagonal and that'll leave you with a slightly cleaner surface with less to clean up later on. So when I thought about this, I just started going completely perpendicular to the grain and just knocking out that material nice and quickly. So I would do one pass going up to our 20 inch line. Uh, then on the next pass, I would stop just shy of that line. Then again, I would just kind of go and taper it all the way down. So that we're mainly removing material from the end here and slowly tapering it back up to the side here. Then once we reach the depth that I wanted to right at the pencil lines, I just went through and hand plane normally to leave us with a nice clean surface. Then we can now go back through and sand with the random orbital sander and it'll give us a nice clean transition all the way down. So we're gonna flip this board around, do the other side, then we'll flip it over, do the back side. Uh, then we can add in our edge profile. Then we can set it aside till we get our other one all done. Then we can move on to the sanding and this, this process, this first board has taken a lot out of me already. Right hand uh, side rail fully sanded up and ready for finish. So it's looking real good. Now I just got to put it somewhere where I'm not going to ding it up and scratch it. And I got to try to not ding it up and scratch it as I put oil on it. So the big thing with these pieces is just that they are kind of a pain in the butt to work with uh, because there is just so many ways to ding them up and damage them. Uh, and you really got to try not to do that. So even though you're working with a nice hardwood, you know, walnut is a pretty hard hardwood, uh, it's very easy to dent and damage and scratch and all that kind of stuff. Ah, uh, just with everything in the shop here.
right guys, so sadly I got a call there for the day. We didn't actually get done both of the side rails. They took much, much longer than I was expecting. So all we have left to do is we just, we, I have this whole front face sanded up to 80 grit. So we just have to run through 120, 150, and then 180 on the front face here. The back side is already done up to 180. So I got that done before I flipped it over. So we don't really have that much left to do. Then once we have the front face sanded up to 180, then we can add in our edge profiles and do our final hand sanding at 180, just going over our edge profiles and all that. Then this one too will be done. So when we come back into the shop tomorrow morning, we'll get this done right away. Then you might be wondering, why am I bothering putting out a video about just sanding for four hours, something like that? Uh, and basically it's just because of the daily videos. I mean, I think it's, you know, I don't know if it's the most exciting content, but this, this is the real world. You know, some days in the shop are just short days like this, you know. If I wasn't going to the market later this afternoon, I would be able to finish this off, probably get the headboard and clipboard done and all that stuff done today, which I would love to do. But again, I have other responsibilities that are horrible. I have to go sit in a field and probably not sell anything for six hours. But anyway, that's that's what I got to do. So I'm going to leave this for now. We're going to come back to it uh, first thing tomorrow in that video. So we'll get this done. Then we'll get the headboard done and the footboard done. We'll get fit. We'll start putting finish on everything. And then hopefully we'll be done this project. Well, we'll technically be done it tomorrow, but then I'll put another coat of finish on it off camera where you guys will never see it. So we should be done it by tomorrow. That is my hope. It's looking good to be done by tomorrow. Again, I got a full day in the shop, so that should be, that should work out just fine. And I'm looking forward to it. But anyway, guys, I do hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.